Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing a five channel amplifier and subwoofer install in this 2007 to 14 Chevy Silverado or GMC Sierra. Now, in this install, we're going to show you how to integrate this amp and sub to an aftermarket audio sound system. Let's get started. All right, so here at the bench. Now the parts that we're going with for our install, first and foremost, is the amplifier that we've chosen to install. It's this Pioneer five channel amp. This is the GMD 9705. Um, it can be configurable either at five or three channels. We're gonna use the full five channels, four of which are gonna power our interior speakers and tweeters, and the single channel left is gonna power our subwoofer. Now, not pictured here on the bench is the sub and box that we're going with. We're doing a single 12-inch Alpine Type S subwoofer and a down-firing box. They do make a box that can hold two 10s or two 12s. Uh, we just opted for the single 12 on the driver's side, and we'll show you what that looks like here in a bit. Now, uh, we're going with this Scar Audio OFC 4-gauge amplifier wiring kit. Um, comes with power ground, RCA's remote turn on wire, we also picked up a second set of RCA cables. So this is a four channel set because in the end, we're doing a full five channel. Finally here for a little bit of speaker wire, we are using a about 20 foot strand of this nine conductor cable. The nice thing is this has all our speaker wire in it, color coded with the aftermarket CEA coloring. So at this point of time, what we need to do is figure out a great place for our amplifier. Um, in most instances, these trucks don't have a lot of space underneath the seats. So alternatively, you can either put it on the floor of the rear seat, or um, in our case, we're gonna be removing half the rear seats and putting it on the back wall of the truck cab. With those rear seats removed, what we've done now to prepare a mount for our amplifiers, we have this 14 by 12 uh, MDF board that we just threw some carpet on to make it look nice. And we are going to secure this amp board against the wall. We don't want to drill through the back wall. So instead, we're going to the upper brace for the seat. Um, and we have these two heavy duty brackets here up top that we're going to tap in with some 10 millimeter bolts there at the top. And then we have a little foot peg that will just secure it from flopping around here at the floor. So what we're going to do is go cut the carpet um, against that back wall. Um, it's the sound deadening carpet from the manufacturer and uh, that's gonna allow us the flat space needed uh, to get this mounted up on the wall. Now, before we fully get this mounted up in place, we wanted to go ahead, since it's out here and available, let's uh, get our ground ready to go. We always put wire ferrules on with a little bit of heat shrink, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that in there. Same thing with our sub uh, output wire. And essentially, we get wire ferrules on our 12 gauge here, and uh, it's gonna go with plenty of length to go down to our subwoofer, and we can cut it to length when we're ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get this in there, we're gonna get that crimped in there, and uh, let's go get this thing mounted. With the seats up and out of the way, what we did is we just cut a little spot here, and essentially that's gonna seat where our amplifier is gonna go flat. This is the back wall. If you cut through or screw through this, it's gonna poke out behind there and the cab, and that's gonna be extremely difficult to repair, especially if it starts to rust. So we're not gonna mount anything to that. Instead, we have a nice uh, bracket here that our uh, anchor holds onto. We're gonna tap two 10 millimeters into there, and then one here at the bottom, and that's gonna secure everything in place. We're gonna go ahead and get our amplifier all mounted there. As for our ground for our amplifier, we could use this bolt here as well. Um, this is nice and solid here over the frame. Um, we can clean it up and tap our own ground here, um, or you can obviously use one of the, the seat mounting bolts. Right, so we got our amp mounted up here. It's nice and solid. We still need to put this bottom screw in. 
but we got our ground created here really nice clean surface there's nothing underneath this area and it's the solid part um, structure here of the cab that sits over the frame rail so a perfect location for a ground here okay so let's quickly talk about how to connect our aftermarket speakers in our car to our newly installed amplifier. We have something called nine conductor cable and we also have our wiring harness adapter for the aftermarket radio in our vehicle. Now this nine conductor cable is super unique because this allows us to essentially carry all our output signals from our amplifier and a double shielded single cable and we can run this to any location in our case we happen to have an aftermarket radio installed and that harness adapter for that radio is going to have all your speaker leads that connect into the car that go to all the speakers in the car um, so generally these speaker leads are hooked up to your aftermarket wiring harness uh, for your radio your radio has a built-in amp as all radios do it's sending that power to all your speakers um, and technically it is an amplified signal because the radio itself has an amplifier but we want more power obviously and that's why we're adding an external bigger amplifier rather than having the radio speaker wires connected we've cut those off from the radio insulated at the radio we don't need them at the radio anymore and instead we have these harness wires that go through and connect into the harness instead of having these connected into our radio harness so these are essentially your, our output wires that go to all the speakers in the car. What we're going to do is grab our nine conductor cable. One end, we're gonna connect into the outputs of our amplifier, our front right, front left, rear right, rear left speaker outputs of our amplifier. And then the other end, it looks like the same thing. I just haven't uh, stripped it back. But essentially here, it'll look just like this. And what we're gonna do is solder on or connect it into these wires color for color they're going to match identically here and the ninth one here happens to be our remote turn on wire which we're going to connect into the radio's blue white wire we're going to connect that as well so what this is essentially going to do is reroute the output of our amplifier our newly installed amplifier through the vehicle to this harness which then runs it through the factory wiring uh, throughout the vehicle so this eliminates the need for us to run new speaker wire to each individual speaker now big disclaimer here we don't have the factory bose amplifier if you have a factory amp in your vehicle already you can't simply just do this if you did we're sending a high amplified signal from our new amp into the bose amp that's going to cause a ton of issues if you have the Bose amp, you're gonna to have to actually make your connections at the Bose amp, not at the radio. And we can link that harness uh, adapter and bypass for the Bose amp down in the description of the video. So we're going to go ahead and get these all soldered up here. We're going to use some heat shrink, kind of like what we do with our radios. And uh, then we're going to loon up our harness and start running this cable from the dash cavity where our radio is going to be and our basically a new newly inserted T harness. And we're going to run this all the way back to the aftermarket amplifier. All right, so we've made our connections here. Because we're using an aftermarket harness, and cycling those through we don't have to go through and identify any speaker wiring colors because it'll be color for color your whites are your front left grays are front right greens are rear left and purple or violet is rear right and each of those pairs will have a black wire which is your negative wire and uh, yeah that's it we uh, connected them all connect our remote turn on wire that passes on through now we're gonna move the heat shrink up and over those connections and shrink them down with the heat gun All right, this is all done and uh, all wired up here. We want to loom it in high temp test of tape. At this point in time, we can install our harness back in the vehicle and run this all the way back to the amplifier. All right, so next let's talk about our RCA cables. Now we have to take signal from the radio and send it 
to our amplifier so our amp knows what to play. So we have our two sets of RCA cables. Now you can just purchase a six channel set where it's all together. Uh, we have a four channel set and a two channel set because there's already um, two channels that were included with our amplifier wiring kit. So we taped them about every six inches or so. One end we're gonna wire up to the radio and run it along with our speed wire or a nine conductor cable. And we're gonna run it on the passenger side from the dash cavity along the kick panels, working our way to the back of the truck. All right, so we have the radio on out. Um, in preparation to install our um, RCAs and remote turn on wire that's bundled in our nine conductor cable and uh, we got our harness all back in. Obviously, we're not gonna cover the radio replacement in this video, only because we have done that in great detail in the radio install video for this specific truck. Now, we'll have two versions of the radio install, whether you have the um, center console and bucket seats or the bench seat like we do and the uh, floating dash up here. Just depends, we'll link both versions of that video down in the description. While this radio is on out, what we did is ran our nine conductor cable hooked to our harness here and our RCA cables. And we just left out what we needed here. Um, we popped down our glove box. So you basically will just push this little tab up. This will come all the way down. We're gonna zip tie, we fed our wire through and zip tie it to that uh, dash support brace, that steel bar. And that comes out this side. This is just held on with clips. And we have that out here. So next what we need to do is pop our kick panels off. Um, that corner panel as well. And we're going to start running our cables underneath these kick panels along the factory loom here. Working our way to the back area. Okay, we're back here in the truck. Let's go ahead and grab our harness adapter and start making our connections for our radio here. Now they're keyed differently, so you can only get them one way. Make sure it snaps into place. All right, so we got it all zip tied. Now we put it along this nice little channel. Um, there's an unused channel here in the kicks, so we can run wiring all the way back towards the rear. So now with that wire ran, we can reassemble these panels. Generally, for most uh, Silverados and Sierras, you're gonna have your primary battery here on the passenger side, uh, kind of in that back corner there. However, we have the diesel version of this 2500, so we have a secondary battery, which makes it really convenient for us because not only is the secondary battery closer in line for the amplifier, but it also has these studs, which are quarter inch um, fine thread studs that we have um, already some screws on so we can add both the power and the ground if needed. So in most instances, you're gonna have to run wire up and over. Um, and if you don't have the secondary battery, just the primary here, um, there's not really great terminal over on this side to connect to. The, you have your tightening stud, but there's no terminal here, right? It's just, basically, it's only crimped on. You can go to the distribution block back here as well. It's it's your call and your install. Some people go straight to the alternator. Um, my suggestion is you can go to this tightening stud, but make sure it still tightens and functions properly. Um, and then alternatively, we can pull that cap off there off the uh, distribution for power. Um, and you can go right to the stud. Now our firewall axis is that big rubber grommet right down in there. Let's see if we can get a kind of a better shot there. It's this guy right here. There may be other unused grommets there. Uh, we're gonna go through the main grommet there. Uh, we'll show you our technique here in the video, how we pull wire through the main grommet um, with the use of a stiff wire hanger to fish that on through. What we're gonna do is grab the hanger, we're gonna fish that through, we'll see where it comes through on the other side, and then we'll prepare by pulling our uh, power wire through that grommet. All right, so what we've done here is we have poked that 
wire hanger on through. We straightened it on out, poked it through one side here. Now we want to stay as far away from that factory loom as we can here. We do not want to damage any of that factory wiring whatsoever as we pull our wire. Here, it literally just passes right on top of the harness there. Uh, it may take you a couple of tries to go ahead and get that pulled on out. But this is our wire here. Now we did take this bracket off just for ease of access and for uh, filming here. You don't necessarily have to, uh, but they are 13s if interested. All right, so what we've done here is we've sprayed our wire and taped it up here. Some soap and water, also got some down there on the grommet as well. Make it nice and slippery here. That soap and water is going to certainly help it pass through that grommet very easily without getting hung up. So what we're going to do with this all nice and lubed up here, we're going to go from the inside of the cap and pull this wire on through. All right, so we've prepared our fuse holder here for up underneath the hood as we've now passed our wire through. Uh, we actually are going to snag a bolt at the uh, fuse box there and uh, mounted our fuse holder. We created a piece of ABS plastic and just shaped it the way we want. And it's going to snag a bolt there that mounts the fuse box down. Um, and then we always put wire ferrules on. So we have wire ferrule on our four gauge wire. We put some heat shrink on there. Uh, this is our blue wire. So it's all done and loomed up on this side we got to do a wire ferrule and heat shrink the output side that goes to the amplifier um, so we're doing that right now there in the car then we'll finish looming the rest of the run so that's how we've created a little fuse holder mount again just some abs plastic uh, with some tin snips cut it to size and shape and got it all mounted looks pretty nice all right so we got our fuse holder all in there as you can see it snags that bolt there hence why that shape the little 10 millimeter and our end will go up here. Now we put a quarter inch nut there. It's a fine thread quarter inch nut right there on that stud. Uh, we'll put a washer in there as well before we tighten it down and hook this up. And uh, split loomed it all the way around, following the factory loom through the firewall there. So we're basically done besides hooking up the positive here under the hood. Uh, we'll do that here once we've com completed connecting all the terminals on the amplifier. Okay, so we continued running our power wire. There's a nice little unused channel underneath the door seal. So that blue guy goes up underneath, pass through the B pillar here, to do down along here. And we worked our way up to our amplifier. Now, amp's looking great. Um, it's nice and solid. We fully mounted it up there, um, just like before. Got wire ferrules on, got it all seated there. Got our speaker wire output that runs obviously up to the back behind the radio where we teed in to the harness so we can send our signal to the doors. That's all done. Again, put wire ferrules on there. Got it all twisted nice, nice and clean there. And we can even further it by a couple of zip ties. Um, remote turn on wire is in that nine conductor cable and goes all the way up along with all our speaker wire to the radio and it connects to that blue white remote turn on at the radio so that's where we get our remote turn on and then sub output goes right here to our box now finally this is we're showing our box here um our box has a little 12 inch alpine type s in there to match our door speakers that we installed in a different video um rcas are plugged in everything's kind of a perfect length actually got our base knob cable there too and we have it all booted up for the first time we got the uh, positive hooked up underneath the hood now we just set our games with an smd dd1 got everything uh tuned up nice got our eq set got our crossover set and uh, basically we're going to wipe everything down do a cleanup and we can reinstall our seat got the positive there all tightened down we threw a lock washer on there just so it doesn't wiggle loose and the nice thing is that will shut Got our fuse holder all mounted, got everything zip tied. We are now officially done underneath the hood. For this install if you have any questions on what we did here post a comment below this amp and sub combo setup is awesome plenty of power for the truck 
and uh, we've also paired it with some new door speakers, dash speakers, radio backup camera. We've done the whole truck here. So if you want to see other videos on this truck, we'll link those down in the description or we'll walk you through step by step on how to replace your speakers, the radio, install a backup camera and so forth. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to hit the like button if you like what you saw and don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time and we'll see you in the next video.